Hey there, welcome back. In today's video, I want to address one of the most difficult questions we face as chess players. Yeah, what to play against the Sicilian defense? Yeah, this is a tough question for players of every level, and especially for those of you who are beginning your chess journey. Yeah, the thing is that learning to play against the Sicilian usually means plenty of theory. Yeah, you need to study plenty of theory. In today's video, I want to explain three main ideas to face the Sicilian. For those of you who are perhaps creating their first opening repertoire, knowing how to play against the Sicilian can be way tougher. So my idea is to give you something simple and to elaborate slowly but surely in future videos. But for now, it's really important that when you face the Sicilian, you have a way to answer and a confident way of developing your pieces. Well, I'm talking about the closed variation. Yeah, knight c3 is a closed variation. We try to control d5. And yeah, we have the plan to play g3. And we, we could have not played g3 right away because black would play d5. And after e takes d5, queen takes d5 hitting our rook and this is pretty uncomfortable for us. So instead, by playing knight c3, we control d5 and after, for instance, the most normal knight c6, we play g3 and we are going to place our light square bishop in the long diagonal and we are not fearing d5. Okay, the game may continue with g6, there are other options, but today I'm going to focus in the main line for black and after bishop g2, bishop g3, we play d3. Yeah, by playing d3, we defend e4, we open the diagonal for the dark squared bishop, and yeah, we keep the mystery of, of how we are going to develop the knight, especially where we may develop it to a2, to f3. To f3. And okay, sometimes we may even play f4 before playing knight f3. Okay, black usually plays d6. They open the diagonal as well. They protect c5. They control e5. That's the most common move. Okay, now there are three ways to play as white, but I'm choosing bishop e3. Yeah, by playing bishop e3, we control d4 and we open the possibility of castling in the queen side. Yeah. The most normal would be to play knight g2 and castling on the king side. This is also very normal, but bishop e3 is very tricky and your opponents may fall into some of the tricks I'm going to explain to you now. Okay, after bishop e3, knight f6 or e6 are the most normal ways to continue. e6 intends to play knight g7 and knight f6 is the most normal now knight g4 can be coming, so we play h3, controlling a probable knight g4, castle, and queen d2. We intend to play bishop h6 and long castle, and perhaps launch our pawns in the king side. Yeah, there are several ways to play, but for instance, a6 is a nice example of what can happen in this kind of position. Bishop h6. We may also have a castle, it's not completely normal. And now b5 would be a blunder. Yeah. Can you um, spot what is wrong with b5? Can you punish Black's uh, blunder? Well, the thing is that our bishop doesn't seem too active, but after b5, the knight on c6 is hanging and the rook is on the same diagonal as the bishop. So after bishop takes g7, king takes g7, we can play e5. Yeah, and now d takes e5 is answered by bishop takes e6 and knight takes e5 is answered by bishop takes a8, winning a complete rook. Instead, protecting the knight with something like bishop b7, we play e takes f6 check, and we have an extra piece. 
Queen d2 is pretty nice. We are going to castle. We are preparing bishop h6. And later on, after playing bishop h6 and bishop takes g7, we can play f4, knight f3. And yeah, even sometimes g4, we are building an attack in the king side. Queen d2. And yeah, we're preparing long castle. And rook b8 can be a, a good way to prepare b5. Yeah, we've seen a6, and after bishop h6, playing b5 wasn't a good idea because of the hanging rook. And after bishop takes, king takes e5, we won material. But playing rook b8 can be a better way to organize b5. So now we play f4. This is an important move. We want to improve our control of e5. And the idea is to meet, again, we're going to meet b5 with the same idea. The knight is hanging and we advance the e pawn, threatening the f6 knight and also threatening bishop takes c6. Okay, so for that reason, bishop d7 is a better move. They want to defend the knight and then to proceed with b5. Now, knight f3, b5, and the b pawn is advancing pretty uh, fast. We change our minds and we go to the king's side. And here we're going to discover a interesting idea. After b4, knight e2, a5, like is gaining space in that flank, but now we are beginning a pawn storm. We are going to launch our pawns on the king's side to get some attack against the black king. Yeah, after a4, f5, with intention of playing bishop h6, clearing f4 for the knight as well. So the game may continue with something like a3, but then we play b3 and there is nothing we have to fear here. Yeah, if our rook, for instance, was on f2, then knight takes e4, good win the rook. But our as our rook is on f1, knight takes e4, d takes e4, bishop takes a1, rook takes a1, is very good for us. So we, we don't have to fear any discovery attack, any discovered attack in, uh, along the long diagonal. And our plan might be to play bishop h6 and after trading the, the, the bishops, for instance, let me try to find a way. Queen b6, bishop h6, rook fc8, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, knight f4, and at some moment to play g5 and threaten, threaten something like f6 or even g5, h4, h5. Yeah, to launch all your pawns. Yeah, and we, we are not, we, we shouldn't forget about the rook. The rook can be, can play a decisive role, perhaps by doubling on the f file, we can create some interesting threats. Well, let's start from move one, e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d3, d6, Again, bishop e3. Now, e6. Well, after e6, queen d2, knight g7, and bishop h6. Yeah, the idea is very clear. We want to trade the, the defender of what is going to be uh, black's castle. And in case of bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, black will be left with the king in the center for a while, castling. And here we have a very special way of attacking that is pretty common, but anyway, is really um, effective. Yes, I'm talking about playing h4. Yeah, in this way, we are using the rook without developing it. We're playing, planning h5, opening the h file and get the queen to h6. So this is a very aggressive way of playing. And black has several ways to, of facing it. 
but in general terms, Black is facing a difficult task. How to defend this position? Yeah, for instance, knight d4, we may continue with... Yeah, knight d4, I guess, bishop h6, and when we take, they are threatening to capture and capture the rook, but we play bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and h5. And we are ca um, threatening the capture and getting with the queen to h6 would be a fabulous attack. Okay, there is a tricky line that I want to show you. Black can play f6. And this is the typical sort of position when we can uh, make blunders if we are only thinking about our ideas. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to tell you that f6 has a threat. Yeah, the right move is to play bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and h5. But what if you continue with h5? Yeah, seems the same, but it actually is a very bad move. Bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and g5. Yeah, and our queen is trapped. Yeah, so it's really important to avoid your opponent's ideas. And this is something I, I treat in my stop blundering video in case you haven't seen it yeah i i uh, this this is one i call selfless yeah you you are not supposed just to think about your ideas but you are supposed to pay attention to what is your opponent up to okay so bishop takes g7 is a way to sidestep that that trap king takes g7 h5 yeah we're again threatening to capture g5 and well we can play both f4 or even h6 followed by f4 and castling on the queen side and playing at f3. Sometimes we are going to be able to play d4 opening the center and I think our position is pretty nice. Of course we are not winning right away but this is a pretty comfortable position to play. Okay so this is it. We are just mm, learning the fundamentals of the closed Sicilian. There are plenty of other lines, plenty of other ideas, but it's a way to start. When you're beginning your journey as a chess player, you need to play a lot. Yeah, but if you know, have some fundamentals, some ideas, yeah, your games will be, will flow, you'll enjoy. But if you know no opening at all, then it is really tough to get your pieces well, don't, don't get tricked. Please leave me your ideas in the comments below. Thank you very much and see you next time. Goodbye.